Welcome to a special edition of Jeff Kunange Live on the Road. Tonight we're coming to you from the spanking new of, uh, studios of the Kenya Defense Forces here at the DOD headquarters in Nairobi. Spanking new. And you wonder, KDF studios? Does that make sense? They've been so secretive all these years. Well, there seems to be a general shift. On top of that, we've got an exclusive access and an exclusive interview with the man at the top of the helm, the man who runs all three branches of the military, the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force. And by the way, he's the only four-star general in Kenya. He's been in the military more than 40 years. He has a wealth of experience, both in Kenya and overseas. And we're going to talk about it. There's so many questions people want to know. The military's role in civilian life, KMC being run by the military, Nairobi Metropolitan Services being run by a military man, my good friend General Badi, and many other questions that you may have. Actually, start tweeting at Koinanga Jeff, at Citizen TV Kenya, the hashtag JK Live. JK Live with the General begins right now. General, good to see you. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much uh, for allowing me to be interviewed by Jeff. Now, look, we brought our bench to you. Right. It's a big deal. You've come all the way to all the way to <laughs> the defense headquarters. Yes, headquarters. Thank you and very much. You're very honored. Strategic communications or right. stratcoms. Right. What is that? Is that a new direction the KDF is taking? It, it is not really a new direction. Uh, it is a direction that uh, many uh, modern defense forces are taking. Uh, for reasons that uh, war fighting uh, has changed. Warfare has changed uh, dramatically because of technological advancements. And what has happened uh, is that, uh, as you know, information, uh, uh, information is one of the elements of national power, uh, together with uh, diplomacy, uh, military, and economics. Uh, and therefore, uh, for the KDF to, uh, to be able to be relevant uh, in modern uh, environment of warfare, we have had to think of how we develop a capability. This is a capability that allows us to uh, sharpen uh, our arrowhead uh, to be able to fight better. Mm. You will know uh, that uh, uh, information influences not just those outside, but also internally. We need the support of the Kenyan public in everything that we do whether we are undertaking an external uh, engagement, either peacekeeping or fighting, or whether we are undertaking a project that is related to uh, civil military affairs, whether we are participating in disaster responses, we need the Kenyan people, who are the taxpayers, to know exactly what we do. And there's no better way uh, to win uh, them over by getting, but by getting a platform of this nature that will be able to uh, develop uh, content and disseminate mm. that content. I'm glad you mentioned that, General, because a lot of people are wondering right now, they're seeing you on TV and they've probably never seen you before or right. have hardly seen you before. Yes. So they're wondering, who is General Robert Kibochi? General Kibochi is uh, a military officer uh, from the Army, uh, joined uh, the Kenya Defense Forces way back uh, in 1979 after uh, graduating from high school. Um, uh, I studied around Gilgil. Uh, for those who know Gilgil, uh, is a home to a lot of security agents there. And uh, uh, the influence, obviously, uh, of uh, being within the environment uh, where soldiers are marching everywhere, uh, holding guns, uh, became a motivating factor uh, for most of us uh, who joined. I'm not the only one, uh, by the way. There are many of us who came from that environment who joined the Defense Forces. And therefore, I uh, have grown into the Defense Forces uh, by joining uh, what we call the Signals uh, Corps. It's a communications uh, department uh, that is responsible for providing communications and information system support uh, to the fighting force. And uh, I've grown through there, uh, commanded uh, the corps there. Uh, and over time, uh, as, a, as a senior officer, I also became the commander of the army uh, uh, and uh, uh, became the vice chief of defense forces. Uh, and now uh, here I am yeah, as the 
uh, the top uh, <laughs> general. The tip of the arrow. Absolutely. Answerable to only one man. The, t the tip of the arrow. The, con <laughs> the commander <laughs> himself yeah. in chief. So, General, let me ask you this. It's been, what, 10 years since Operation Linda Inchi? Right. Uh, Kenya's uh, foray into Somalia. Ten a decade later, what lessons have we learned from that? Uh, I think it's not been uh, 10 years uh, to uh, the extent that uh, Linda Inchi uh, is defined. As you know, uh, we got into Linda Inchi uh, in the, on the 14th of October uh, 2011. And uh, after six months, uh, we rehearted uh, after achieving our objective. And the objective at the time uh, of getting into Somalia uh, in response to the provocation uh, of the Al-Shabaab uh, in many, many ways, we uh, as a country decided that uh, we had to defend our sovereignty uh, and therefore we were able to get into Somalia okay, as a country and push the Ashabab. And then later on, uh, after six months, uh, we joined uh, AMISOM. We became a member of AMISOM. So we've been in AMISOM now uh, for close to 10 years yeah. uh, as part of the multi, uh, multinational force of over 22,000 soldiers out there. Now, there has been a lot of development uh, over that period of time. Uh, you will know, for example, that uh, the menace of al uh, was prevalent uh, a lot in not just Kenya, but also even other neighboring countries. Uh, but you will agree with me that uh, there has been drastic change in terms of the threats that we face. Uh, from this uh, menace of Al-Shabaab. We've also been able to liberate quite a number of areas. Uh, today, if you were to visit our troops in uh, Kismayu, uh, you will not uh, believe it because uh, Kismayu uh, is alive uh, with a lot of business activities taking place. Uh, there are no threats of Al-Shabaab. And the reason for that is because of the presence uh, of AMISOM. And we are in AMISOM, we are in Kismayu, uh, we are in major cities, uh, that, uh, towns that we've been able to uh, liberate. And therefore, uh, from the overall, uh, we have achieved drastic uh, milestones that was supposed to be achieved. Have we uh, gotten to the end state? Not yet. Uh, the reason being uh, that what has been happening over the last 10 years, we've been applying kinetic force. The kinetics where you are hitting on the enemy. What needs to be done now is to bring in uh, development. Uh, people need to see development coming in, uh, schools op reopening, uh, children going to school, and so that you can dry the pool uh, where the al Shabaab recruits from. And that is what is going to happen now that we are getting into a period where AMISOM is being reconfigured. You will know that uh, there is a debate coming up at the Security Council that is looking at how the AMISOM can be reconfigured. And our thinking has always been, uh, now that we have been able to degrade the threat, it is time for us to bring in other dimensions. We need to bring economic dimensions. You need to bring in social development into the space. Uh, and so that you can open up the country, uh, open up the roads, uh, get infrastructure in place. Uh, and so that uh, we can, at some point, get to a point where the Somali National Security Forces themselves can take over from, from us. When you talk about reconfiguring Amazon, and I know it's not up to the Kenyans alone, but d d 10 years later, do you see AMISOM still continuing for the next few? You still see them in the long term? We see AMISOM, yes, continuing because one of the, one of the um, challenges that you face in a place like uh, uh, Somalia, there is uh, normally uh, no peace to keep there. And therefore, you need uh, forces that are willing uh, to uh, stand up the threat, uh, stand up to the threat uh, of Al-Shabaab. And the five countries currently uh, in, uh, in Somalia, uh, Kenya, Ethiopia, Djibouti, uh, Burundi, uh, these are countries that have demonstrated the will uh, to fight the Al-Shabaab. And I think, uh, in my view, uh, these countries will be still very useful uh, in a reconfigured army. So it is important uh, that other actors come into play. 
uh, other attacks come into play, and so that we can be able to pool resources uh, to be able to do the final bit. Uh, and that final bit is uh, what I'm saying of ensuring that you dry the pool where the Al-Shabaab is recruiting. Mm. It is recruiting because there are no schools there. So b uh, children grow, uh, there are no opportunities, uh, there are no social amenities, so they end up joining the Al-Shabaab. Yeah. Uh, so this is an area where, uh, as you know, uh, uh, the uh, international community uh, is very much aware of. You said you are in Sierra Leone. Uh, and that's exactly what happened out there. Uh, we did not just go there to uh, get the RUF out of the place. Uh, the RUF went, but development came into play. Uh, and today is a thriving country. Absolutely. Yeah. General, one thing that's on Ken vivid in Kenyan's memories mm -hmm. is the fall of the attack on El Ade. Right. 2016, yes. about five years ago. Yes. What lessons did we learn from that? Right. A lot, of, a lot of lessons. Uh, we learned uh, a lot of lessons uh, and very, uh, uh, at a very high cost uh, because uh, at the time that we got into, uh, into uh, joined to Amisom, the threat of ID was not as prevalent as we know it. We knew that the Al-Shabaab uh, was making IDs, but they would place them on the roads mm. uh, and uh, we could uh, be able to get equipment uh, that uh, would be able to identify them uh, as we moved uh, in, in, in convoys. Less did we know that the Al-Shabaab had developed a capability far bigger than uh, uh, IEDs on the roads. And this is what they call the vehicle-borne improvised explosive devices. Filling a whole truck uh, with explosives and then ramming it in into a camp. Okay, somebody has decided that he'll die, the driver, mm. and they're blowing it up. And that was the first time that a vehicle-borne IED was uh, employed to hit a, a base. Now, what lessons do we learn? Uh, we learned that uh, this is a threat that will continue to uh, thrive. The first thing is to strengthen our bases. We have close to about uh, 14 or 15 uh, bases, what we call the forward operating bases. So we had to uh, undertake a whole reconfiguration of our defenses. Ensure that you have trenches, uh, double trenches, okay, on the outside and inside, and so that when these vehicles come, they get into the ditches. And uh, you will know, uh, since Elade and since Colbio uh, thereafter, mm -hmm. we are very confident that we have strengthened those uh, particular areas. So the protection is great. Uh, so that is one lesson uh, that uh, we learned uh, after having gone through that experience mm. uh, of Elade and Colbio. Obviously, uh, there's been a lot of fallen soldiers in the last 10 years. Absolutely. And the fallen soldiers' families are probably watching you right now, General. Uh, absolutely. What do you tell them? The fallen soldiers, uh, we tell them every day. Uh, and we take care of them uh, as much. You will know that we've just come back from uh, celebrating uh, those fallen soldiers uh, during the KDF day uh, at uh, Kahawa Garrison. And uh, the fallen soldiers' uh, families are never forgotten. We have made sure that they are, we continue to take care of them uh, in terms of welfare. Uh, we made sure that uh, if there are placements uh, for schools and uh, uh, jobs, uh, we also uh, help because they are part of the family. The KDF really is a family. Mm. It we cannot do without the family. The family is a critically important piece. Uh, and yes, uh, there has been uh, fallen soldiers. Uh, families are left behind. Uh, it is our job as leaders of the Kenya Defense Forces to ensure, and these commanders here, uh, to ensure that we take care of them. General, you talked about Al-Shabaab uh, a few minutes ago. Has Al-Shabaab changed in the last 10 years? Has the enemy changed in the last 10 years? The Al-Shabaab has changed. The enemy has changed. And, and the reason for that the enemy has changed is because the enemy has been um, linked to the Al-Qaeda. It's a huge network uh, spreading uh, in uh, Northern Africa, uh, in the Maghreb, uh, and elements in uh, Afghanistan, uh, and the ISIS now 
that are joined in. Now, these linkages between uh, these groups uh, bring in new dimensions. Uh, one is that uh, as opposed to the Al-Shabaab that we knew, for example, that uh, would use the, uh, an ID uh, or vehicle-borne ID, the Al-Shabaab now uh, uses uh, drones. Okay? Now, uh, that means they can surveil uh, your facilities. Uh, uh, and therefore, uh, what lesson do we learn from there? Anti-drone uh, capabilities is important for us to have with the troops. Secondly, there is a question of uh, Al-Shabaab never used to have indirect fire uh, weapons yeah. capability, using mortars, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, and mortars, you can fire a mortar from five kilometers uh, into a base. Uh, and therefore, these are lessons that have been uh, mastered by this enemy uh, from the experiences of other groups uh, from other regions. Uh, and yes, uh, the Al-Shabaab continues to mutate uh, into different forms. Uh, the Al-Shabaab also, as you know, has had to recruit uh, foreign fighters uh, who come from all over the world uh, to engage in this kind of fighting. But has a Shabab been uh, degraded? Absolutely. Absolutely uh, degraded in a bigger way. Uh, what we're dealing with now is the remnants that we must be able to now get the international community to support the future uh, Amazon uh, to be able to uh, do the final job uh, so that we can be able to hand over, uh, okay, at appropriate time uh, as Amazon to uh, the, uh, the, 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 the Somali National Security Forces, mm -hmm. whether they are police or, or military. And yet once in a while, Al-Shabaab is able to break through General Westgate, Dusit, and others countless that we right. probably never hear about. Right. Does that mean that you, us, everybody, we have to be on alert all the time? Absolutely, uh, absolutely. And I think that is important uh, where uh, you are dealing with a faceless enemy. A faceless enemy uh, who you might not know, or who is your neighbor, you know? And therefore, uh, it is the responsibility of us all, uh, not just the security forces, uh, to be on the lookout. Uh, look, at, look out at behaviors, uh, the change uh, of children uh, who have disappeared and joined the Al-Shabaab. Uh, parents must come out and say, uh, my child has disappeared and, uh, you know, they have not been seen. And normally, they would go into, uh, into, uh, into this movement. And as you know, the Al-Shabaab is also recruiting uh, through the social media. They are able to recruit using the social media very effectively. Uh, and, and that is the reason why this war has to be fought by all of us, every one of us. Mm. Right. Is that also one of the important things about strategic communication platforms? Ab absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. To be able to be able to get to know uh, you know, the elements of Al-Shabaab. They are very good at using social media. Mm. Uh, and sometimes they can be ahead of the security forces. Uh, how, do we, uh, how do we counter that uh, as a defense force? So those are the capabilities we might Sure, sure. Gen I mean, it reminds me a lot of America after 9-11. Right. Place will never be the same again in terms True. of alertness or being caught unaware. Absolutely. Is there that fear in the military that, you know, we we might get caught unawares one day. It is not fear, really. It is a concern, uh, and genuinely so, because um, uh, there is always going to be somebody sneaking in. What, what the citizenly doesn't uh, probably get to know is how many of those uh, incidences of threats are stopped by the, by the intelligence, uh, by the troops in the field. Uh, I go visiting these troops, uh, and I'm very, very proud of them, because... Uh, right now, we have a lot of troops uh, along the border, uh, sealing off that border. Uh, is there a likelihood that uh, somebody is going to slip through? There is obviously going to be. Uh, and therefore, uh, the rear, rear uh, areas that we are occupying must also be uh, alert uh, to these kind of uh, breakthroughs. Yeah. Yeah. General, uh, before I take a break, I want to ask you one last question that has to do with Kenya and Somalia. The recent ruling by the international Court of Justice about the uh, international territorial waters on maritime mm. border. Mm. Does that raise tensions more with Somalia? Because Commander-in-Chief, the President said, he's not going to give up an inch. Mm. 
does that raise tensions even more? I, I don't think it should, because remember, uh, Somalia and Kenya are going to be neighbors. Uh, we never chose uh, who would be where. Uh, so I think there is a sense that uh, there is need for us to be able to agree uh, to live uh, uh, harmoniously. Because if you come to think about it, those people who are bordering uh, Somalia in Mandera, in Kiunga, these are the same people. Uh, they are the same people. Uh, you will not believe it, uh, the number of students uh, who go to schools in Mandera uh, from across Somalia are very many. Mm. Now, we, we, we cannot afford to not to allow them to come and study. Uh, in Kiunga, for example, uh, those who come to get medical uh, support from the Kenyan side are so many. That relationship will always continue. I believe uh, at some point uh, there has to be discussions around this matter. Uh, because you're right, there is no way uh, if you uh, have uh, a border that has been existing uh, for all these years, uh, somebody can come and say uh, that no, it, doesn't, uh, it, 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 it didn't pass here. Uh, that is not acceptable. Uh, and that's where uh, the no, no inch less is, 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 a, is a red line. Yeah. Uh, because uh, uh, Kenya belongs to Kenyans. Uh, and nobody will allow uh, any part to be ceded. Uh, so there is a sense, therefore, that um, the discussions uh, will have to continue even after the ruling uh, because it's important uh, that that continues. Yeah. Yes. General, I want to take a break, come back, talk about uh, military involving itself a lot in civilian affairs these days. Everything from Nairobi Metropolitan Services mm. to Kenya Meat Commission. A lot of people are asking, why did it take so long? Why mm -hmm. did it take so long? Mm -hmm. Also, women in the military. You see a lot of uh, promotions of late. Mm -hmm. How is that going about? Mm -hmm. And um, it's amazing that, you know, this giant complex has been here all my life. I've, mm -hmm. I've never been to this place. To this place. First time ever. Right. Uh, is the military opening up more to ordinary Kenyans? <gasps> talk about that after right. the break. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We have a yeah. special exclusive interview one-on-one -on -one with the man, the four-star general himself, General Robert Kibochi. He's the man at the helm of all three branches of the military, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force. He's the CDF. We're talking to him live here in their studios at Strategic Communications or Stratcoms right here on Jeff Koinange Live. We'll take a break. Keep tweeting at Koinange Jeff at Citizen TV Kenya. The hashtag JK Live. JK Live takes a break. We'll be back in a moment.